something one of the advisors said this weekend, Cedric Richmond, he said, Republicans defunded the police by not supporting the American Rescue Plan. But how is it that that is an argument uh, to be made when the president never mentioned needing money for police to stop a crime wave when he was selling the American Rescue Plan? Well, the president did mention that the American Rescue Plan, the state and local funding, something that was supported by the president, a lot of Democrats who supported and voted for the bill, could help ensure uh, local cops were kept on the beat in communities across the country. As you know, didn't receive a single Republican vote. That funding has been used to keep cops on the beat. But at the time, that was sold as uh, these local police departments might have a pandemic related budget shortfall, not we need to keep cops on the beat because there's a crime wave. Uh, I think that any local uh, department would argue that keeping cops on the beat to keep communities safe when they had to, because of budget shortfalls, fire police is is something that helped them address yeah. crime in their local communities. Those in the local communities, the White House's argument was the American Rescue Plan is going to be $1,400 checks, it's going to be vaccines, vaccinators, uh, we're, it's going to put us on the path to beating the virus, not... It did those things things as well. It was a pretty good bill and piece of legislation. This is what it looks like when Republicans are on the defense. And why are they on the defense? Because while they're desperately trying to wield the whole Democrats support defunding the police argument, what's become clear is that when not a single Republican voted for the American Rescue Plan, which included $350 billion for state and local governments and would help fund the police, that what they were doing in effect was defunding the police. Funny how that works out. Now, Peter Ducey tries to run defense for Republicans by claiming that Democrats can't possibly take credit for this because, after all, Biden never stood up at the lectern and said that the $350 billion allocated to state and local governments would specifically go to confronting a crime wave, which is ridiculous considering everyone knew that state and local funding would help fund the police. And guess who deals with crime? You guessed it the police. Why Peter Ducey thinks that this needed to be spelled out in some Rose Garden speech is absurd. Police fight crime. When you fund the police, you're fighting crime. That's how it works. It's very basic common sense, which in retrospect, I understand might be difficult for Fox News. He goes on to say this. But at the time that was sold as uh, these local police departments might have a pandemic related budget shortfall, not we need to keep cops on the beat because there's a crime wave. That the state and local funding was sold as keeping cops on the beat because of a pandemic related budget shortfall, not to confront a crime wave. But again, how does Peter Ducey think crime gets addressed? You really don't need to stipulate to police departments when you're allocating these funds. Hey, by the way, in case you weren't aware, we would like you to also fight crime. I'm pretty sure that's a given. Honestly, does Peter Ducey think that because it was marketed as doing one thing that it can't also do another? A car might be marketed as going zero to 60 in three seconds, but guess what? It might also drive autonomously. It might have power locks and windows. It may keep you extra safe during a crash. Just because you market something one way doesn't mean it doesn't have other benefits. When you fund the police during a pandemic, Yes, you are hedging against budget shortfalls, but you're also funding departments that fight crime. Both of these things can be true, Peter, even if you don't come out and say it. This is a very, very, very basic concept I'm outlining here. And beyond that, imagine Biden did say outright that this funding was to combat crime. What would change? Would the amount be different? No. Would the bill be different? No. Would Republicans have voted for the American Rescue Plan? No. So what's the point of parsing words here when the fact remains that the Republicans didn't support it and wouldn't have supported it? The point is to try and spin Republicans' refusal to vote for the bill as not being a bad thing, but it is. And my favorite part of Ducey's questioning here is this. The White House's argument was the American Rescue Plan is going to be $1,400 checks. It's going to be vaccines, vaccinators. Uh, we're, it's going to put us on the path to beating the virus. Ducey doubling down on this ridiculous claim that the White House's argument was that the real selling point of this bill was $1,400 checks and vaccine funding. I mean, yeah, it did those too. And yeah, those were the primary selling points of the American Rescue Plan. But the $350 billion in state and local funding wasn't a secret. It was still widely known and widely advertised. It was another major selling point in addition to stimulus checks and vaccine funding. The fact is that there was a lot in this bill, which Peter Ducey very generously, albeit in inadvertently pointed out. And Ducey's clarification here just offers one more opportunity to state the obvious. In addition to not funding the police, Republicans also didn't fund vaccines and they also didn't fund stimulus checks. Tell you what, of all the things I didn't expect to happen today, Peter Ducey pointing out every element of the wildly popular American Rescue Plan that the Republican Party didn't support 
wasn't one of them. And the simplicity of this fact is why Republicans are now falling over themselves to try and rewrite the narrative. Just today, Elise Stefanik, who replaced Liz Cheney as the number three Republican in the House, took to Twitter and wrote, don't let the Dems and press stenographers get away with this garbage. Dems mantra, defund the police, was one of their top policy and messaging points in 2020, including Biden, who said yes, yes, about defunding the police. GOP has always supported increasing funding for police, except they quite literally voted against it. See how easy it is when their rhetoric is the literal antithesis of their actions? That is why Republicans are panicking. And the bit about Biden, who she claims said yes, yes about defunding the police? Yeah, Joe Biden literally wrote an op-ed in USA Today and said, quote, while I do not believe federal dollars should go to police departments violating people's rights or turning to violence as the first resort, I do not support defunding police. It doesn't get much clearer than that. And yet that didn't stop Elise Stefanik from misrepresenting the facts. But hey, being part of Republican leadership means that you have to get used to certain things like, you know, lying. So while Republicans are clearly launching a coordinated messaging campaign with right-wing media to pretend that Democrats hate police and love crime, their actions speak louder than words. And when it was the time to actually fund the departments they claim to support, the fact that not a single elected Republican in the entire federal government voted for it should tell you everything that you need to know. If you enjoyed that video and you're looking for a deeper dive, check out my podcast, No Lie with Brian Tyler Cohen. It's a no BS look at the top stories of the week, along with interviews with the top names in politics, like Vice President Kamala Harris, Jen Psaki, Elizabeth Warren, Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, Katie Porter, Pete Buttigieg, and more. Again, that's No Lie with Brian Tyler Cohen, available anywhere you listen to podcasts.